Hi, this is John Hilbrands. Today I'm going to discuss building under cabinet drawers, or, or trays, I should call them, because they don't have the fronts. They actually still have the cabinet front. So these trays are going to be mounted to the shelf that they're going to uh, be on top of. Um, so this is actually also a hidden corner treatment. So we have two trays here that pull forward, and uh, the one that goes into the hidden corner uh, it pulls over. So uh, this is one of those L-shaped cabinets and it has that deep recess over there that basically gets cobwebs because no one uh, can get any of their stuff around the corner. So let's take a look at these and then I'll show you some building details and then also I'll take you in the workshop and show you how I built them. All right, so uh, these trays pull forward as I've mentioned and then they have lots of heavy stuff in them. Some, I have a couple of lodge uh, cast irons along with some Teflons and some other pans. And so probably about 40 pounds of weight plus about maybe a 10 pound uh, drawer. So about 50 pounds. The, the drawer slides accommodate 100 pounds. They're considered a heavy duty. And they're those three sections so they pull all the way forward. In my video in the construction, It'll show you a little bit of putting them on. And one of the things I want to tell you is that I did change a couple things. For one, these go all the way to the end, and that was so that they would come all the way forward um, because our tray that's in the hidden corner, we had to um, get it to come a little further forward so that that would slide on because you can see how close my clearances are. You can also see what my wife chose to put back there. Um, she chose to put uh, uh, baking sheets, but you can still put pans in there if you wanted to. Um, she just chose to do that, I think just because all of her pans were over here where she wanted them. All right. You can also see that I chose to make three different uh, trays. Uh, this one being raised by the size of the drawer slide, so it'll go over the top because there's obviously a drawer slide over there, and it has to go over the top of those, okay? Um, this is a two by two poplar block, and these are the sides here are made of poplar as well. So you can see why I chose poplar is because it basically looks like a finish wood, and it's uh, been uh, treated with Danish Watco oil in the natural finish. It kind of um, it darkens it just a hair, but it also makes it look a lot better and it gives it kind of a glow and it'll also uh, seal and protect as they say on the can. All right, let's slide this back and look at the back of how that works here. So you can see how these three sections pull forward and when they go in, they completely go in and you can see how close it is to the other uh, cabinet. All right, there's another thing I wanted to point out is that these doors have to go to 90 degrees and make sure that yours do because mine the knobs hit so I had to move my knob just a hair on both sides and that's that uh, is hidden by the base so it wasn't really that complicated for me but it might be more complicated for you you can also see that uh, there's another way to mount these and that's if you have a center style I chose to use the block and I think it worked very well. One of the advantages of the block is that things can go over the edge and you don't really have a worry of it hitting. Uh, this is a two by two block, but it's actually milled down or it's when it, you buy it, it's actually an inch and a half by an inch and a half. So these drawer slides uh, um, uh, are actually an inch and three quarters. So they're just slightly higher than my block, but. It doesn't really look weird, so I mean that's fine. They're mounted all the way to the the the, the flush edge, and you can see that uh, on here. So in this kit hollow, I uh, took one of these blocks and I cut it to my skill saw so that it would fill the gap perfectly. This is the normal two by two block, and down here. There is also a two by two block, but it's kind of hidden because it's behind this uh, this edge. All right. 
And then these here <clears throat> are actually mounted to the side of the cabinet. So I didn't need any blocks there. I did decide to use a block in the back, but it's actually uh, just a one by two. And that was because you see that piece of wood there. I wanted it just a bit forward so it would pass that. So when it pulls, it doesn't hit that reinforcement uh, piece of wood there. So there's a lot of clearances to check when you're building this. Make sure you check. Um, I mentioned that I, these are 24 inch drawer slides and these are called side mount drawer slides. So side mount drawer slides are different from bottom mounts in that they need something to mount to on the sides. Um, bottom mounts are actually still L-shaped and they're L-shaped in the uh, about <clears throat> inch and three quarters each way. So they really don't save you space. Um, so they would raise the bottom a bit and uh, uh, it would be awkward as well. So, and because I'm having to use side mounts in the other areas, I think it all worked out this well. Make sure when you look at these, you don't think, gee, I could save a lot of space and mount these this way. Well, yes, you could, but they would obviously bend in use and they're no longer 100 pound rating, they're more like five pound rating because uh, these are very sturdy and uh, you know, cast iron pans, all this stuff, you know, well into the 50 pound range is what's in this drawer and it handles it fine. This is built with um, one inch poplar um, the, by three inch in height and I have rabbited the edges, but you can just as easily do a straight frame here with a screw going in, and then you would just recess them and fill them, and that would look fine too. You can also use your Craig tool and make screws that come in from the inside. Um, I do like, though, the recessed plywood that I chose to use, which was half inch. <clears throat> So this isn't some cheap press board bottom. It's half inch plywood and I actually use Mediterranean plywood, which is very expensive. It's like 60 bucks for a four by four piece. Um, but it has a lot of plies and it's got this shiny surface on one side. Um, and it looks almost identical to what the poplar looks like with the Danish Watka oil natural finish. So it's a very good blend for the inside, except this is a little more slippery. Um, so that'll make cleaning a lot easier. And uh, so I think I've showed you everything. Let's go in the workshop and I'll show you how to build those. And hopefully this video will work for your situation. And hopefully uh, your wife will give you kudos for, for having done it for her. All right, let's go look in, the, look in how we built that. Okay, so here I'm in the shop, and here's one of the sides, and it's going to be reduced in width, but right now it's at four inches, so it's a little high. Um, you can see that groove, and that groove is basically designed to line up with this plywood. There's a little lip on it, so it doesn't fit perfectly yet. I'll have to scrape that, but that's the Mediterranean plywood that I'm using. And it has a lot of cores, and it looks like a nice finished piece of wood. Um, for a drawer bottom. So it's a good choice for this, especially because I want a lot of strength. That's half inch uh, in width. So what you do is uh, basically you set your blade at the right height of half the wood essentially and then you tip it and it should also be at half the wood. Uh, so it works very well because that um, uh, that'll work in two directions. And then what you'll end up with is this little cube that comes out. And uh, so that way you don't have to make repetitive passes. And since I'm doing so many of them, I didn't want to just do repetitive passes. The other option is to um, get out a dado bait. You can see when you do that repetitive pass or those two different directions, you get a little lip. And what I'll do is I'll scrape that out with a, um, a chisel and that'll make it come out nice and clean. So I have them separated into three stacks, A, B, and C, and I wrote their dimensions for each one of the pieces. Uh, so you can see that's my drawing, and that'll be what I'm working with. And um, now it's time to figure out the exact width of the fronts. Um, I'm going to actually cut the lengths 
or the widths down later. So uh, I just want to figure out where those front dados or front rabbits go. So what I want to do is I want to put them in um, position and make sure that they slide perfectly uh, from front to back. And you want to double check them. So here's one in position and you can see uh, that it's uh, now I'm going to later on move these uh, drawer slides forward, so um, <clears throat> so don't pay attention to that. Um, <clears throat> but you can see how they um, they just barely touch on the size of the runners. So the part that attaches to the inside of the drawer is on that drawer slide right now, um, and they fit um, um, pretty much perfectly. Uh, you can kind of when you move it you can kind of see if it's pushing it in or not and there's just enough movement that it's right in there and remember the drawer is inset from there or the sides are inset so that front is the width so now I can now cut those uh, rabbits on the side and have the perfect width and my drawer will slide nicely um, this way and then I will raise the blade and make the cut while they're standing up this way, which is a little tougher, so I'll have to make a jig to do that. All right, here we go. Okay, so to to pull off that little bit of uh, ledge that I was saying when we cut in that weird way, is I just run my chisel along. And you can see a little splinter coming off, okay? and that got rid of that little bump that's when the two blades are overlapping. It's not the perfect way, obviously, um, to make them. That's just something, and you can see how this drawer is setting up. So basically when the fronts don't have the uh, indentations, and you can see that this is an inset for that strong plywood that I'm gonna be using, and everything's gonna be glued and then nailed. Okay, so you can see uh, just how many nails I did um, just to hold it down. Now when you do it, it's a good idea to have that angled a little higher so that you won't push it uh, into the cabinet because it's already uh, basically uh, inset. So an example would be like this. So um, because it was angled. All right, so you can see a lot of glue and I like a lot of glue, but now I have to take my sponge and do a lot of cleaning. So I like to use um, basically a sponge. Now you don't want a wet sponge. You want it pretty dry, and we're going to just uh, keep water out of the joint as we clean all the excess glue off. Okay, so it's now time to do my sanding. And you can see all that glue cleaned up really nicely. I'm gonna sand it with, um, 100 and then 140 and make sure the edges are rounded. Okay, so here we have the track being screwed on. And you can see that I just have two screws and I put them in the one holes that go up and down. So choose the one you want. Um, in this case, this is for the back and um, for the hidden corner. So I wanted to try it first. And once I'm happy with it, I'm going to put uh, two screws in each uh, set of holes and uh, that'll make it nice and secure. So this is the finished project. So I hope this project has helped you. And um, I don't think there's anything else to point out. Uh, the biggest thing is uh, uh, what I said in the beginning, and, and that is, you know, using those blocks really made a, a difference in making those side mount hinges work uh, properly. So if you like this video, give it a thumbs up and even a subscribe, and I'd appreciate it. And good luck on your project.